YouTube, so right now I'll be reviewing Windows XP running on, okay, I'm just trying, okay, Windows XP running on Parallels Desktop 8, so let's turn it on right now, from being resumed. So overall, I'm very happy with Parallels Desktop 8, the way it handles Windows XP. Overall, I use it a lot consistently for school. And I say it's a very stable platform. So as you can see here, I have a lot of applications installed. So uh, I can I can plug in my USB into Windows XP using Parallels Desktop 8. It detects the USB. It all works under my computer. And the and the operating system just handles it the way you'd want and expect it to be handled. It handles Visual Studio quite well. So I have Visual Studio around here somewhere. Visual Studio. <coughs> Visual C Sharp 2010. <coughs> As you can see it loads up. It loads up all the files. There's no corruption or any major CPU hang. If you can see here. It even debugs it. I mean, it's running perfectly fine. And even in the dock, it will appear here that I'm running Visual C Sharp 2010. And it comes up here. Okay. Uh, the test manager also runs perfectly fine. You can monitor your performance over here. As you can see right now it's running on a single core. This is fully customizable in Parallels Desktop in the settings of it. So if you go up here in Visual in our virtual machines and go to configure, you can configure the amount of CPUs, the RAM usage and also the total size of the virtual machine. You can also change the video to enable retina resolution where everything becomes extremely small and it's unusable and if you try to change the screen resolution I find that it just changes it back to the retina resolution that's a little bit of a problem that I dislike with the um, with Parallels Desktop 8 but otherwise I find that it's pretty stable when running I rarely had any crashes from Parallels Desktop 8 and uh, in comparison to um, to the previous uh, Parallels Desktop 7, this is a major improvement. Uh, as you see here, I'm currently running on 30-ish frames per second, which definitely isn't the best. But then again, it's running on a single gig of RAM with a single core as a virtual machine. So that's when you realize that in reality it's not it's not that bad. Still very powerful for whatever it's doing. I find this is ideal for running office applications, business applications more than games. For games I would say boot camp is truly the way to go. But for my usages which have been uh, programming is in Visual Studio, running Microsoft Office because I'm not going to pay two hundred dollars for the proprietary Mac version in addition to using um, occasionally Minecraft when Skype didn't have share screen on Mac for some reason I, maybe I didn't see it or there was just a new update that pushed it out but really I'm pretty happy with this virtual machine I mean I also have Windows 7 and Bootcamp but it's just so much easier to just turn on a virtual machine and have it running on. I would say it was definitely worth the money as I'm also running MS-DOS with uh, Parallels Desktop, Windows XP, Ubuntu, Linux and you can virtually have almost any operating system in the virtual machines. And I find it's really it's a really nice experience. So now I'm going to show you coherence mode. So let's quit Minecraft <coughs> and let's try to go to coherence exit full screen so now you have it like that and enter coherence <coughs> so it's starting up coherence mode 
And right now, okay, one sec, that's my previous YouTube video. So we have Visual C Sharp running with my Mac. You can go back to the start menu from here. Here, pop up. Windows start menu. And here you have your menu. start menu. So uh, here, let's load up something like. Hmm. Let's load up SketchUp. Google SketchUp. As you can see, it loads up. And you can do all sorts of drawings, bases, etc. It's just basically, it's very powerful. Even in coherent mode, you don't see any noticeable lag. And it's just running in a very excellent manner. So, um,. I'll go back to exit coherence mode. Here. As for battery life, I would say that battery life isn't that bad. But, of course, it depends on how you're using a virtual machine. I mean, if you can tweak it to have better battery consumption, but you won't get very good performance. Right now, it's on a faster virtual machine. But, Parallels has a built in feature that disables some effects that will make it more desirable for use. Now as for the internet, internet never really had any problems with drivers, same with CDs, networks. The sound always worked perfectly fine, so does the keyboard. To be honest, I never really had any issues. You can also, apparently you can migrate it. You can import from bootcamp. So say you have a bootcamp partition with Windows 7, you can import it over to Parallels. Which I find is a very neat feature. And yeah, so thank you for watching.